Hey guys, how's it going? Brian from Brian Boas here. The Moran Morph is a beautiful, incomplete dominant form of pastel boa, which I believe has a great amount of potential for combining into other morph projects. Today I'm going to discuss the Moran gene, as well as show you some beautiful Moran animals from my collection, and touch on my future breeding plans with the Moran gene. As you probably know, there's quite a few different lines of pastel boas out there. And the vast majority of these are polygenic in origin. That is, the pastel colors are determined by a lot of different genes interacting together. But what's special about the Moran pastel is that this is an incomplete dominant gene where the pastel colors are determined by just the one single gene. And so it's incomplete dominant. So if an animal has one copy of the Moran trait, or the Moran gene rather, he has the Moran trait, which is the pastel colors. And then if, you, if an animal has two copies of the Moran gene, this is called Super Moran, and the animal has this really intense, deep, bright red color. So I'll say a little bit later about the Super Moran. But this is a Moran boa. This is actually a hypo Moran, both hypomelanistic and Moran Pastel. And you can see the Moran gives the animals this beautiful reddish pinkish pastel color. It also cleans up the background and makes the pattern cleaner as well as uh, more contrast. And the colors in general get better over time. So this is a three-year-old female and she's you know really developing quite nicely. I just love this particular animal it has these really nice light silver eyes, which are really beautiful. This particular animal has a 50% chance of being het for the call albino as well. So, you know, my first plans for this particular animal is to cross her with my call albino male and fingers crossed that she proves out to be het albino because that could uh, that will lead to some uh, Moran sun glow boas, which should be quite spectacular. Even if she's not het sun glow or het uh, cal albino, the resulting offspring will be het call. Some of them will be Moran and hypo, and then they can be crossed together to lead to the uh, Moran sun glow boas, which should be quite spectacular. This particular animal is probably about, I would say, a year or two away from breeding size. Just want to make sure that she's in really good shape and you know really don't want to rush breeding these animals too young as I think a lot of people are breeding their boas a little bit too young but I'm looking forward to pairing her up with my cow albino male which actually that this will be among my first morph cross since I've been really breeding uh, just locality boas exclusively up until uh, these upcoming crosses. This is another two gene Moran combo in this case, this is a Moran jungle female. And the Moran jungle is one of my favorite two gene combos. I just think these two genes really go well together. So the Moran gives the animal this beautiful pinkish, orangish, reddish pastel coloration. You can see all the color in her sides and belly. It's really beautiful. And the jungle gene further enhances the color and the contrast. Um, also leads to the background colors are much cleaner. You can see how clean her dorsal surface is. Um, and it also leads to some embarrances of the pattern. You can see the characteristic jungle shaped saddles as well as some partial striping. You can see her tail is striped, but just a beautiful look overall. You can see um, she's a little darker than the hypo Moran I showed you last, you know, the hypo melanistic gene, hypogene makes them a little lighter. But you know, I really think that the jungle and the moron just go really well together. Doesn't need that hypogene uh, to lighten it up. Just a beautiful looking animal. So I wanted to say a little bit about the history of the moron gene. This gene has actually been around for over a decade, and, but it really hasn't been uh, bred all that much. Um, and it actually originated in Germany. There was a German breeder, Jorn Pelkofer, who crossed two pastel boas and the offspring. He got two normals. He got nine that were pastel. And then he got three that had this crazy, you know, dark, bright red coloration. 
and he determined that you know from these numbers that this was an incomplete dominant trait. You know, the pastel ones are the morons, and then the really bright dark red ones are the, were the super morons. And so this particular animal, uh, she's probably about five feet long, so probably about you know about a year or two years away from breeding size. Um, but you know one of the things that interests me about the moron boas is the possibility of producing the super moron since it's such a it's not a very widely seen morph and it's really spectacular. I actually have another jungle moron boa and this guy's my only male moron so I plan on pairing him up with one of my female morons to produce hopefully some super moron boas but you can see he's also very beautiful uh, he looks a little different from my female jungle moron. You can see his colors are not quite as dark. He's a little lighter in color. You know, just you can see that beautiful pinkish pastel sides and look how clean his belly is. Just a very striking animal. And then you can see how clean his dorsal surface is. Um, the jungle gene just really cleans it up, it cleans up the pattern. He's also got some striping from the jungle gene. Um, and this really cool geometrical shaped uh, tail blotches. And as well, you can see that the typical jungle appearing saddles. Just a gorgeous animal overall. Let me show you his tail if he'll uh, let me unwind it. And this guy is uh, 2018. Um, but I estimate that, you know, he will be ready to pair up with one of my Moran females probably in about uh, two years or so. So probably the 2022 breeding season. The Super Moran is definitely a very striking looking animal. And the main reason I got this guy was to pair up with one of my females to hopefully produce the Super Moran. Uh, the male Moran boas were quite hard to find, but luckily I managed to find this really beautiful example. Now I'm going to say a little bit about the Super Moran boa. Unfortunately, I don't have a Super Moran in my collection, but I'm here on MorphMarket.com, which is not only a place you can buy boas, but also a really good place to research on what boas look like. So at the main page, I'm going to click on Boa Constrictors, and this shows all of the different genes that cause morphs in boa constrictors, and they also have some locality boas down here as well. And so up here it says for sale, sold, and all. So I'm going to click on all. And this will show me all of the animals that have been on Morph Market, both ones currently for sale and ones that have sold. And looking here at Moran, you can see there's two little boxes with numbers in them. And you can see the blue with the number 28. This refers to normal, or in other words, one copy of the Moran gene. These are Moran boas. And the Purple is the super form, which says two. So there have been two super morons on Morph Market. So I'm going to click on the two. And you can see here both of these super moron boas. And they actually both have been super moron jungle boas, not just plain super morons. But it gives you a pretty good idea of what they look like. And you can see this animal just has this amazing, really deep, bright red color and this kind of faded out pattern. In this case, this is a jungle super moron. You can see the characteristic appearance of the tail saddles due to the jungle gene. And you can see this kind of uh, two-toned animal with the, the side coloration is different from the top coloration. But this, you know, deep red color, this is a caused by the super moron uh, gene. So the moron gene in the homozygous form. And here's another one. This is again another super jungle, or, or I'm sorry, another super moron jungle, which has a similar appearance as the other super moron. Just this really intense, deep, bright red color. One last thing about the super moron boa is it's unclear whether or not it's viable, whether it can breed. So these animals appear to be healthy. As far as I know, there hasn't been any cases of a super moron having reproduced, but there are so few of them around 
this might be not because it's a sterile uh, boa, but rather because there just hasn't been enough people attempting to breed it or enough crosses set up. So it remains to be seen whether supermorons are viable or not as far as breeding. And I wouldn't say that, you know, there's any reason to believe that they're not. You know, as I pointed out, there have been so few of these around, there just hasn't been people trying to breed them. But it should be pointed out, there are other super forms of incomplete dominant genes, like the super jungle, which are not uh, supposed to be viable as far as reproduction. So just bear that in mind when you're thinking about super morons. So we saw hypo moron and jungle moron. And I have one last animal, which is actually a hypo jungle moron. So it has all three of these incomplete dominant genes, just a single copy of each. And you can see this is a very beautiful animal. You know, very light colors and the beautiful pink and orange overtones. Um, the jungle improves the contrast and you know, cleans it up. Uh, and you can see some aberrancies of the saddle due both to the hypo and to the jungle gene. So altogether, just a very impressive looking animal. Uh, she's also got really cool looking eyes and very beautiful facial markings. Just a very striking looking boa. Um, she mostly has this kind of orangish pinkish colors, but she also has a little bit of a purpley lilac uh, uh, undertones to them. Just, you know, very beautiful animal. Um, I got this animal. My goal with this particular animal is to cross to a VPI T positive albino. Uh, so I have a VPIT positive male, which I plan on crossing with her maybe in about a year or two. And then I plan to cross the heads together to generate the T positive morons and T positive jungle morons and T positive jung jungle morons and all the different combinations. But when you combine the moron with the VPIT positive, it's just this beautiful animal that almost appears to glow like a light bulb. Literally, they look incandescent, just very striking looking animal. One last thing I wanted to say about Morons is where does this name come from? And most likely it comes from an Australian crawfish, which is named a Moron. Um, I don't know for sure that that's the case. Some people have also suggested that it comes from a European type of chestnut tree. Um, if you have any better idea of where the name Moran comes from, I'd love to hear it, so please comment below. But I'll just say that it's not maroon, like M-A-R-O-O-N, the color maroon, like the color purple. It's Moran, M-A-R-R-O-N. Okay, so don't get it confused with the word maroon. It's a Moran. And as I mentioned, I believe that this particular gene has a lot to offer because it's an incomplete dominant pastel. And I look forward to pairing up my animals in the years to come and hopefully creating a lot of really cool Moran morphs. So, as always, if you have any questions or comments, please just reach out to me. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boss.